سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا قال الله تعالى في سورة التوبة بعد نقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد تعب الله على النبي والمهاجرين والأنصار الذين اتبعوه في ساعة العسرة في ساعة العسرة من بعد ما كاد يزيغ قلوب فريق منهم ثم تاب عليهم إنه بهم رؤوف رحيم وعلى الثلاثة الذين خلفوا حتى إذا ضاقت عليهم الأرض بما رحبت وضاقت عليهم أنفسهم وظنوا أن لا ملجأ من الله إلا إليه إلا إليه ثم تاب عليهم ليتوبوا إن الله هو التواب الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين رب شح لي صدري ويسر أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي نستقر الله ربنا من كل ذنب ونتوب إليك ربنا زدنا علما آمين يا رب العالمين الحمد لله we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we praise Him, we seek His forgiveness, and we trust in Him. Alhamdulillah, it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be gathered here, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to glorify Him, and to witness this blessed day of Jumu'ah. Inshallah, in the few minutes that I have today with you, I want to share uh, the repentance of the three Sahabas in the Quran. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them, and their repentance is so amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes their repentance part of the Quran. So, what was the repentance? You know, every single one of us is a sinner. Because the Prophet says, كُلُّ بْنِ آدَمْ خَطَّعُونَ Every single son of Adam is a sinner. And it's part of being human to sin. That's why we are better, and, and what makes us better uh, than the other creations is the quality of repentance. We, we have the option to do good or evil, <coughs> but we have this, uh, this tawbah in us, right? We have this this innate nature to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek His forgiveness. So we all need Allah's repentance. And the best of the best example is from the Quran. So I want to share with you a small story of the Sahabas in the Quran, how they were forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, the, the, ayah that I, the ayah that I recited from Surah Tawbah, uh, you know, uh, have to, has to do with Ba'al uh, al the expedition of Tabuk. So I'm going to give you a brief background of Ba'al uh, al before we get into the actual ayat, inshallah. So back of Tabuk, uh, this, the Prophet ﷺ makes the announcement to march against the Roman Empire. This is the first time that Muslims are going to uh, go against the Romans. And Romans were the superpowers of their time. And the Prophet ﷺ gets the news that the Romans are planning an attack against the Muslims in Medina. And so before even they attack Medina, the Prophet ﷺ wanted to show his courage. So he makes the announcement for, for, a, for a war. Now, in those days, the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he would go out, whenever he would do anything, he would not make an announcement. He would, he, he would, you know, do it right before, you know, uh, right before that incident, right? For example, the conquest of Mecca was not announced. The Muslims went unannounced, and then was surprised for the for the opposition. But this time, the Prophet ﷺ makes an unusual announcement, and he's telling the Sahabas months before to prepare for this for this huge, uh, you know, battle, which is going to be very, very difficult. And so the Prophet ﷺ, 
You know, he commands the Sahabas, and this is called Ghazwa al Usra as well. Ghazwa al Usra, which, is, which means a difficult battle. It's going to be very difficult. What's difficult about this battle? Number one, there are a lot of economic difficulties. Because it was a time of famine in Medina, you know, there was no rain for a long time, and they did not, they did not have enough wealth, uh, enough crops, and vegetations, and food uh, to survive. So it was a, a, a time of great difficulty, economic difficulty. There was a famine on top of that, and it was a scorching heat. The heat that year was very intense, right? So Habis couldn't, you know, imagine going out. You know, if you know, even today, the, the you know, midday, no one comes out in, in the Middle East. They go, you know, take a nap or something like that. But the Prophet makes the announcement to march against Romans, and it's 800 kilometers from Medina. So you can imagine how difficult it's going to be. And what's even more uh, difficult about this is this was the harvest season. If the Sahabas leave, then they will miss out on the harvest season. If you know about farmers, they only get paid once a year, right? That is the time to reap the benefits of their, of their efforts. And so the Prophet makes the announcements and it was a test for the believers to see how strong they are. So everybody starts making their preparations and now we have the narration of Ka'ab bin Malik. Ka'ab bin Malik is one of the three Sahabas who were left behind. And we'll see what happens. So he narrates what happens, okay? It's from his perspective that we are going to understand what happened in the book. <coughs> not, I'm not going, I'm going to go into other details, I'm focusing on the aspect of Tawbah inshallah. So Ka'ab bin Malik, he became blind later on in his life and he had a guide, his name was Abdullah bin Ka'ab. And he tells us what Ka'ab bin Malik told us, uh, told him about the battle of Tabuk and how he was left behind. So we are understanding what happens. So Ka'ab bin Malik goes on, so he says, I accompanied every single battle with Rasulullah Sallallahu I was there with Rasulullah Sallallahu in, in Uhud, in Ahzab, in every single camp. I was there in Aqaba as well, in the Pledge of Aqaba. Every single battle I was there. But the only uh, two battles, the two battles that I missed was Battle of Badr, because it was an unexpected encounter with the enemies, and this one, Battle of Tabuk. So, he says, I enjoyed being with the Prophet Sallallahu but this time I regret it so much. And he tells us what happened. So when the Prophet ﷺ made the announcement for Tabu, everybody started preparing months before the actual uh, march. And what happens is, Ka'ab bin Malik, it was the harvest season, so he sees the Sahaba is preparing, so he's like, okay, let me do it later. You know, I can prepare, you know, last minute, it's okay. He kept delaying his preparation to the point that the army actually leaves. Okay, and all of, you know, the entire army, and then he's still thinking, you know, he, you know I, can, I can catch up, I have a really fast horse, I can catch up with the army, the army goes slow, and so I can catch up with them. And so what happens is, days go by, he's just procrastinating, 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 and what happens is, the Sahabas, they leave and they actually reach the, the book as well, right? They reach, they, they encounter the Romans. And so what happens is, the battle actually did not take place. They, they reach that place, and then what happens is, Ka'ab bin Malik says, I realize the only people who left behind were the hypocrites, the weak Muslims. They were, you know, openly, you know, from their mouth they were saying they were Muslims, but inwardly they were, they were non-Muslims. They were hypocrites. So only they were left behind, and I was there. So I felt really bad. So I, you know, planned to go, but then what happened? Uh, days just went by like that, and the Muslims were planning to come back. And now there, he says, something happened there. The the Prophet of Allah, <coughs> while at Tabuk, he asked the companions, "Where is Ka'ab bin Malik?" Look at that. Of all these different people who were there, the Prophet of Allah, Recognize who is not there. It says, where is Ka'ab bin Malik? And we see the character of the Sahabas. The Sahabas did not say, Oh Ya Rasulullah, you know, he is, you know, just skipping on this, he's doing that. And rather, we see that the Sahabas had good opinions of each other. He says, Mu'ad bin Jabal, radiallahu anhu, he stands up and says, Ya Rasulullah, we only know good of Ka'ab bin Malik. Well, you know, he must be, you know, over, overcome with something, you know, uh, something valid. We don't know what happened. So he says, we only know good about him. And so the Prophet you know, uh, continues, and then uh, uh, Ka'ab bin Malik says that Muslims are planning to come back to uh, Medina. And so the army returns finally, and the Prophet Sallallahu whenever he would return from an expedition or any battle, he would first go to the masjid, right? And he would offer two rakah, and then he would go to his house. He would not come to his house unannounced, even though it's his own house. And you, you would think, okay, why would I have to tell my, I want to give a surprise. There's no such thing as surprise to your family, because they may be in a, in a state that are in a state that they're not ready to welcome you. So that's where the Prophet will come to the masjid, and then the people would know, okay, the army has returned, the Prophet has returned, and then he would go uh, and uh, go to his family. And so while he was at the masjid, what happens is a number of companions came to the Prophet uh, 
they were not companions, but they are actually hypocrites. So they came to the Prophet and they started giving excuses, lame excuses. There were about 80 people, they were all lined up. And you know, in those days, it's a, it's a um, command, it's a, every single person in the city has to go. If you don't go, there must be a reason for not going. Right, a valid reason. Maybe you're physically unable to, you know, join the battle. Or something must be there. And so these hypocrites, they came to the Prophet ﷺ and they start making lame excuses. Okay. So one Sahabi says, Ya Rasulullah, you know, the reason why I didn't come is because on the way there are a lot of beautiful women. So I thought, you know, it'll be a fitna for me if I'm marching, you know, uh, you know, with with the Sahabas, I'll get tempted and you know something will happen. So that's why I stayed back. And the Prophet said, No, they are just lying and just making up. And so. He doesn't, you know, with, with the hypocrites, the Prophet can only tell them, and Allah already informed these people about, about these people. And the Prophet is coming back, says, Ya Rasulullah, when you go to Medina, you will see that this person will come and say this, this person will come and say this. The Prophet has already been informed of this. And so he says, just let them go because they don't, they don't want Jannah, just, there's no point in arguing, just seek forgiveness for them and that's it. And so what happens is, everybody started giving excuses. Now Ka'ab bin Malik is in the line and he's thinking, should I? You know, say something, should I just make up something or just say the truth that I have no excuse to join? Okay? <coughs> and so Ka'ab bin Malik is thinking, thinking, and then his turn comes and he goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah, if I want, I can say whatever I want. I can make up a story and make you happy. But I know that that will not make Allah happy. Because if Allah is not happy with me, then He will reveal something about me that will make you, that will make you angry. So I'm going to speak the truth. I'm going to try and can, I know make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. Even if you're not happy with me, I'm fine. I have no excuse. Uh, you know, I have no valid excuse to uh, not join the battle. So do, you know, just tell me what I should do. What is the punishment for this? And so the Prophet you know, he was angry. You know, he, his face, you know, uh, changed. And then he says, this person has spoken the truth. Right? You have spoken the truth. And then he says, I have no judgment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding this. So we are just going to, at, the, at, the, at this point, we're going to just boycott you, right? Everybody, he, he tells all his companions, you know, all of you should stay away from this person, okay? Should completely boycott. That was the punishment for not joining. So completely boycott. And then Ka'ab bin Malik felt really bad. He starts crying. And then he's, he's going back. He's leaving Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know, a few companions came to him. Says you should have just made up some story. Why did you say the truth? You know, if you if you just made up some story, just say you had to take care of your family, something like that. Then the Prophet ﷺ would have sought forgiveness for you, and he would have you know uh, forget, forgiven you. And so Kaab Malik, you know, he th he thinks about going back and changing his statement, but then he was told, and then he asked the companions, are there anybody else who are left behind? Any other companions, the like true Muslims who had the same state? And then at that point, he was told, yes, two other companions, they were Badri companions. And they were Murara, Murara bin Rabi'ah and Hilal bin Umayyah. These two companions have already uh, also had the same state. You know, they were also boycotted. And Ka'b bin Malik says, those are Badri Sahabis, they, are very, they have very high status. If they had the same state, then I'm just going to be patient and, uh, you know, uh, bear this uh, state. And so what happened? Uh, they are completely boycotted. Okay? And so Ka'b bin Malik says, even when I would come for prayer, the Prophet ﷺ would not look at me. You know, he had so much love for Rasulullah and Rasulullah loved him too. That he had no judgment regarding him, so he had to just stay away from him. And so he says, when I would look at Prophet Sallallahu he would turn away from me. Right? And when I would pray and I would, when I would look away from him, then he would, you know, I could see from the side that he's looking at me. Right? So they were kind of stealing glances, but you know, they just couldn't do anything. He felt really, really bad. And then what happens? You know, nobody talks to him. He goes to the marketplaces, he goes around, nobody talks to him. And then he, he, jumps from, uh, he jumps into the garden of Abu Qatada. Abu Qatada was his close friend. And he goes to Abu Qatada and says, Oh Abu Qatada, do you know that I love Allah and His Messenger. You are witness to that. I love Allah and His Messenger from the depth of my heart. And then Abu Qatada turns away, he doesn't reply to him. Oh Abu Qatada, you know that I love Allah and His Messenger. You are witness to that. And Abu Qatada turns away from him, he doesn't reply. He says the same thing again. And Abu Qatada says, Rasulullah told me not to talk to you, so I can't talk to you. Look at that. Look at the love they had for Rasulullah. If your close friend comes to you, oh, I love you, you know, it's okay. You know, I'll, I'll do something about it. But they had genuine love for Rasulullah. Even in his back, they did not violate his loss. Even if it's your close friend. And so he says, no, I cannot, 
I cannot talk to you. You know, uh, go. As Abu Qatah, as Ka'b bin Malik cries a lot, and then he leaves his garden, and then, you know, he's just walking in the marketplaces, and then what happens? A person comes from Syria, and then he was looking for Ka'b bin Malik, and he was directed to Ka'b bin Malik, and this person, this was, it was a messenger from the king of Ghassan, and he says, there is a letter for you from the king of Ghassan, and so he was a non-Muslim. Obviously, uh, so he uh, gets the letter and he reads. He reads the letter, and the letter says, "I heard that your companion, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has abandoned you, and your people have abandoned you. No worries. You can come to me. You can come to us, and we will give you a high position. Uh, you know, in in our in our place. And so he was a scribe. So he, they they wanted him to come and translate Arabic for him, meaning you get a a really good job, right?" So you will have all the friendship, you will have all the money, everything you will have, come to us. And Ka'ab bin Malik says, this I realized was a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, everybody has abandoned me, I could, e I could easily go join them. That could also mean losing his faith. Because you would, if you're in the, uh, you know, in the office of the, of the governor or the king, you have to do what he's telling you to do. That means losing his faith. So he says, I ripped, my pa I ripped that paper and I threw it in the garbage. Right? I didn't want to do anything. I, I, Continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking his forgiveness. And this went on for uh, now 40 days. For 40 days, no one is talking to Ka'b bin Malik. And then the message comes to Prophet Sallallahu that Ka'b bin Malik and the two other companions should also stay away from their wives. Right? They can, they can talk to them or everything, but they cannot have any relationship. And so they were told to separate their beds. And Ka'b bin Malik tells his wife, you know, you go to your mother's house. You know, I'm going to seek Allah's forgiveness and wait for the fate. You know, wait for Allah to decide in my regards. And so he continues crying and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa for 50 days. And at Fajr, 50th day, he was praying Fajr on top of his roof. Okay? And what happens is, a person from uh, the Banu Salama tribe, he runs, you know, to, to Ka'b bin Malik saying, There's good news, Ka'b bin Malik, there's good news for you, there's good news for you. Ka'b bin Malik gets really excited. And then he finishes his prayer and he says, What's the good news? And Ka'be, uh, this, this messenger says, Allah has revealed ayahs regarding you, that he has accepted your forgiveness. Allah has revealed ayahs regarding you and talking about you in the Quran, that he has forgiven you. And Ka'be Mali gets so happy that he removes his, uh, his clothes and he just gives it to him. Right? As a gift, he gets so excited. And he says, those are the two pairs I had, so I had to borrow some uh, clothes from someone and I rushed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then as soon as he went in, the Sahaba was sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu and Talha bin Ubaidullah, he gets up, he shakes hands, Ka'b bin Malik is so happy about you. You know, he agrees and shakes hands, Ka'b bin Malik says, I never forgot that handshake of Talha bin Ubaidullah. And then he says, he goes to Rasulullah sallallahu and he could see the Prophet sallallahu was smiling. And his, his face was bright like the moon. And that's how the Prophet sallallahu his face would change when he was really happy. And so he could see that his face was like, was like bright moon. And then he says, Ya Rasulullah, look at this. He asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, is this forgiveness from you or is it from Allah? <coughs> right? Is this, are you, did you forgive me or did Allah forgive me? And Prophet says, no, it is in fact Allah who forgave you. And then he recites the ayat from Surah Tawbah that I started in the khutbah with. لَقَدْ تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَى النَّبِي Certainly, Allah forgave the Prophet, Al Muhajirin, the migrants, and Ansar, the helpers. Those people who followed the Prophet in the hour of difficulty. Well, I call this the difficult battle. Difficult battle. After, you know, so their hearts were overwhelmed with, with fear and, you know, with difficulties. Allah forgave them. And He is extremely compassionate and loving towards the believers. And then He says, And the three people, wow, with the Al on it, shows the, the specific people. And these are Ka'b bin Malik, Murara bin Rabi'ah, and Hilal bin Umayyah. And those three people, الذين, خلفوا, those who were left behind, they didn't want to stay behind, but they were left behind. As if something was there, it's a passive form to show something, you know, pulled them back. 
Khulif was not there for all something was there as pulling them back. Hatta ida daqat alayhim al ard. And what happened? The earth was constricted for them. That bima rahubat. The earth is vast, but then it was constricted for them. Meaning that they could go around in the land, but no one was talking to them. It was constricted as if no one, you know, as if he was the only person in the entire land. The earth was restricted for him. وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ And his self was restricted. وَظَنُّوا أَلَّا مَنْ جَاءَ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا And they, these three companions were certain, were sure that there is no refuge, there is no protection without, uh, you know, besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no protection besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we make mistakes, my dear brothers, uh, we should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what the consequences are. Be truthful, be upright, and bear the consequences that is better for us than to hide it and satisfy the people and earn Allah's wrath in the hereafter and in this dunya. So these people said, even if Rasulullah your beloved, is angry with you, I don't care. I made a mistake. I need Allah to forgive me. ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا So Allah forgave them. إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Verily Allah, He is of forgiving. He forgives again and again and again. إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ And He is loving. يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا So what is the lesson for us here? O oh, you who believe, اِتَّقُوا الله. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ And be with the righteous people. Be with the truthful people. And never ever ever lie. And so Ka'ab bin Malik gets really really happy. And he says, I never even thought about lying after that point. That I, I learned the lesson that no matter what the consequences are, I will always speak the truth. And then he says, there are ayat revealed for the other group. The group who gave excuses to Rasulullah for not joining the battle. Name excuses. He says, what happened to them? He says, Allah revealed ayat about them. سَيَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَكُمْ إِذَنْ قَلَبَتُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ لِتُعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ فَعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ Allah says, they will swear to you. Wallahi, Ya Rasulullah, I couldn't join because, you know, um, my family, you know, I had to go to the hospital, I had serious, you know, trouble, you know, I had this, I had that. They may, they make up these excuses, swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'ridu anhum, turn away from them, Ya Rasulullah. They turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so you should turn away from them. Innahum rijis, they are filthy. They are filthy, they are unclean. وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ Their destiny is going to be Jahannam. جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ That is what, that is the recompense for what they have earned. يَحْلِفُونَ لَكُمْ لِتَرْضَوْا عَنْهُمْ They promise you, they take an oath on you, that you may be pleased with them, they want to please you. فَإِن تَرْضَوْا عَنْهُمْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَرْضَوْا عَنْ قَوْمِ الْفَاسِقِينَ Even if you are pleased with them, Ya Rasulullah, if, even if they make you happy by not saying the truth, then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not satisfied with, is not pleased with the nation that uh, fasting, that crosses the boundaries. That at that time, the, look at this, right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he could have easily said, Oh no, no, you're lying. I know you're lying. He could have said that. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is teaching us something. That when a person says something, don't judge what's in their heart. Take their words, that's it. And leave their hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does not know what's in your heart. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us something that they came and gave you know, excuses, but the Prophet says, okay, may Allah forgive you, you can go. Right? He doesn't say, yeah, I know, I know about you. The Prophet knows obviously they're lying, but he doesn't judge into that. Right? So that's what the Prophet, Allah is saying, that they try to uh, you know, make you happy, but Allah is not happy with them. Right? That is how Ka'b bin Malik says, that is how I, know I was forgiven, and I can never forget that left the book. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا لي وغفر لي بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا so uh, a few lessons that we can learn from the story of the three companions. First lesson is that never procrastinate. Never say, I'll do that tomorrow. <coughs> never say that I still have time. I can, like Ka'ab bin Malik says, no, I can easily join. You know, when the command of Allah comes, do that right away. Do it, I mean, it doesn't have to be in deen, even in dunya. Right, when Allah, when you see, when there's a task in front of you, do it right away. Because if you delay it, then you are missing out on the things that you could have done at that time, right? So never ever delay, never procrastinate, because you never know what, your, what the outcome and how shaitan can take over you. 
The second lesson we can learn is that have good opinion about each other. That Muslim Ummah is like one body, right? We need to defend each other and protect each other's back. And we see that when Ka'b bin Malik was not there, the Sahabas only gave, gave good opinions. Ya Rasulullah, we don't know why Ka'b bin Malik is not with us. We only know good of him. There must be some reason, right? That's a, that's a true believer. These are the companions who have promised Jannah, who have guaranteed Jannah in this dunya. Why? Because of these qualities in them. And the third lesson we can learn is that know that Allah is always watching you. That no matter, you can, you can fool the people around you, you can fool your spouse, your parents, your children, your, you know, your, 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 master, sorry, your manager, could be anybody you can fool, but know that Allah is watching you. And if Allah is not happy with us, then you know, things can, Allah can put hatred in their hearts for us. And number four, fourth lesson we can derive is that follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and no matter who you are talking to, what the situation is. Like Abu Qatada radiallahu anhu, he, his best friend came to him and he's in dire need of help, you know. But Abu Qatada saw that Prophet Sallallahu commands are better for him, better for me. And so he followed the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions followed him no matter well, how close the person was. The fifth lesson we can derive from the story is that punishment is kindness. Punishment is kindness. That when you are punished, that is because a person loves you and he wants, to, he wants you to become better. If Ka'ab bin Malik did not go through that punishment, that boycott for 50 days, he wouldn't have that good news of ayat revealed about him. Look at that. For you to get in the ma'al usri yusra, that's a lesson. That you have to go through difficulties so that you can see what is Allah saying in this ayah. Inna hu bihim ra'uf or rahim. Twice he says, Allah is loving. He's talking about boycott and punishment. But he says, ra'uf or rahim. Allah is loving. Because punishment is kindness. Love, if you really love someone, then you, want, you will do anything you want to make them uh, a good person. And the sixth lesson we can learn is Allah will test our Iman in times of difficulties. That was a test for the believers. That it was a harvest season, was famine, a lot of things, it was a long journey. And Ka'ab bin Malik himself was tested. That everybody, nobody's talking to you. And he gets a letter from the king of Hassan. He could have easily left everything. I don't care about this you know, religion thing. I was just gonna go and get a job and you know, settle my life. He could have left, you know, done that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing him to see, are you going to you know, take this challenge or are you going to uh, give up your faith? And so Ka'b bin Malik obviously he ripped that letter and he followed uh, you know, that, that repentance. And the seventh lesson we can derive is fear of death in a state of Allah's anger. That Ka'b bin Malik, you know, one other thing that, that kind of made him really anxious was that, what if I die now? What if I die? He was crying those 50 days and worshipping him saying, yeah, uh, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because what if I die in this state? Allah is angry with me and Rasulullah is not looking at me. What will happen to me? That should be our state. Whenever we make a mistake, you should, you should think, what if I die now? Every single second you should be thinking, what if I die in this state? What will be my outcome? But that's why we should make sure every second we're making Allah and His Messenger happy. And uh, the eighth lesson we can derive is that if Allah loves someone, He will test them. Right? And so we see that we look at people who don't pray, who don't do any of the sadaqat, who don't do any of this worship, but they're having a good life. But I do so much things, why do I have to bear this? And Allah, Allah teaches us in, this, in, in the Quran that the best of people are tested the most. When Allah loves, look at, look at Rasulullah Just because you go through difficulties in your life doesn't mean Allah hates you. That's a sign that Allah loves you. Because the best of people like Prophet Sallallahu Ibrahim Ayyub all the Prophets, they were the best of people, yet they had the most difficult of life from the dunya perspective. You will have difficulty in your life, but what you have to see is after that test, do you get closer to Allah or not? A lot of people you know, are confused. Okay, is this a test from Allah or a punishment from Allah? The answer to that is, what is your response to that test? If your response to that test is, Allah, you're happy with Allah, you're getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's a mercy, blessing from Allah. If after that test, you go away from Allah, that was a punishment for you, right? So it's our response, it's our attitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if you think Allah is forgiving, you will find Him like that. And if you, find, if you think Allah is, you know, is unjust, then you will find Allah like that. So we should always have good opinions. And when you have difficulties in your life, know that that's a test. And the last lesson we learn is that hasten towards good deeds. Run towards good deeds. Like the person, as soon as he gets the ayat, that the Prophet announces that ayat came down regarding these three companions, that they run, 
They rush to Ka'b bin Malik, they were so happy. Your brother's happiness is your happiness too. And so they run to Ka'b bin Malik at Fajr time, you can imagine. They didn't wait, okay, let me just take a nap or something. When he gets up, I'll go some, no. Right away they go to Ka'b bin Malik, and Ka'b bin Malik, you know, gives his dress to him. Right, we should always hasten towards good deeds, and whatever the news is, we should, you know, give that. So these are some lessons that we can derive, and there obviously there are a lot of lessons to learn uh, from, from this story. I mean, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to stay on the truth, Qulu qawl and sadida, that we say the right word, an upright, truthful word, no matter what the consequences are. And Allah promises, if you do that, yuslih lakum ma'amalakum, He will rectify your deeds. Wa yaghfir lakum zunubakum, and He will forgive your sin. Wa ma yuta'i Allah wa rasoolah, whoever follows Allah and His Messenger, faqad faaza thawzan azima, that is the greatest victory ever. عباد الله يرحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله العظيم يذكركم وأشكر على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون.